Thanks for giving us a hand, Tony. So much quicker with two on trailers. Ah, that's all right. As long as you'll do the same for me. Yep, that was the deal. Bert should be here any minute, by the way. Oh, great. So when do you think you'll want me? Well, I'll have to ask Tom what the best day is for him. Well, any time next week will be fine. The kids will be on holiday. We ought to be able to get one of them to do the calves, at least. Pip's always a help, isn't she? Well, I was thinking more of the boys. We can't count on Pip these days. Uh-huh. Still loves young Dream, is it? <laughs> I wish. What? She hasn't fallen out with her boyfriend? No, unfortunately. And I query the boy bit. Man friend would be more accurate. Oh, uh-huh. Was he much older then? Pat said he was in his 20s. Tony, he's nearly 30. Oh, I suppose that is a bit of a difference. A bit? 12 years? Yeah, well, I know it sounds like a lot, but... Well, there was more than that between Greg and Helen. That was totally different. Helen was much older than Pitt when she met him, sure. Oh, not that much. Only early 20s. And he was nearly 40. Yep. Come on, Helen had been through college. She lived away from home. Pip is 17, just. You can only try to guide them, David. Well, I know all that, but... Come on, you must admit there's a world of difference between a kid of 17 and someone in their early 20s. It changed such a lot in those few years. Find out who you are, what you want. Yeah. I don't want Pip throwing her life away on this guy. Oh, I reckon they go on changing all through their 20s. And they can still have surprises up their sleeve, you know, even in their 30s. Oh. Thanks, I can't wait. Yeah. Anyway, you want to count your blessings. At least Pip's got a boyfriend. Does Josh know you've got his camera? Yes, he said I could. That's him and Jamie doing Ghostbusters, I take it. Yeah. It's the village ready for this, I ask myself. Ben, are you going to help change this bed or not? Not. Well, you might as well have gone to church. Grandma would have taken you. No, thanks. I usually like to see the donkey. The donkey's OK, but you've still got to sit through the service. Boring. Alan's services are not boring. How do you know you don't go? <laughs> I'm busy. I'll go next Sunday. You've got to. It's only on Lakey Hill. Not the dawn service. I'll be milking. I meant the one in church, which I'm sure you will come to, as it's when they give out the cream eggs. About Easter eggs? What about them? Last year, Josh's egg was bigger than mine. What? The one from you and Dad, a whole 25 grams more. Well, well, he's bigger than you. Pip only got the same size as me. Oh, for goodness sake, that's not what Easter's all about. So this year, I ought to get a bigger one. 50 grams bigger. And how do you work that out? To make it fair, I had to wait a year. Oh, I don't know where you get your ideas from. Right, that's that done. Well, let's have a look at this famous Jedward stuff, then. You don't want to see that. I'll show you something much better. What? There. Wait, Jamie, you're not in shock. What? Move it a bit higher. I don't yeah, believe it. Josh! <laughs> yeah. Josh! Come here now! Oops. Tom? I thought you'd be out with the pigs. I have been. I came back to check on you. Tea? Yes, please. And a side order of paracetamol by the looks of it. I've already had some... Oh, it's never half eleven. Mm-hmm. The clocks have gone on, haven't they? Here. Oh, thanks. Which means it was actually three o'clock when you rolled in last night. Good time? Brilliant. And you're not missing anything? Missing? Oh, nice tea, thanks. Yeah. Anything you might have lost or forgotten? Don't think so. Not even this? My ring. What are you doing with it? More to the point, what are you doing without it? And even more to the point, what were you doing without it on last night when you went out? Whoa, well, hang on. What are you suggesting, Tom, that I went out on the pool? I don't know, did you? How could you? Well, what am I supposed to think? If that's not the reason, then why did I find it on your bedside table? Is that how you spent your evening, snooping around? What else did you do? Go through my drawers and read my emails? Of course not. After the fuss you made on Friday as well, because I saw a few old friends. What is the matter with you? I'm just... just... Jealous and possessive. This isn't like you. I know. 
I know it isn't. I, I don't know what it is. I was just a bit shocked. That's all. That you'd gone out without your engagement ring. So you thought you'd build it up into some big drama, some conspiracy? No. Well, what? All right, I'm sorry. Sorry. It was just one of those things. I took it off to do my makeup. Next thing, the taxi's here. I rushed out and I didn't put it back on. That is it. Right. It's really not a big deal. No. Right. I'm going to make some toast. Do you want some? So, let me get this straight. You and Jamie were doing the tagging round the village and you thought it was so funny you filmed yourselves at it. Mum. I'm just trying to understand, Josh. Were you proud of yourselves? Chill, will you? You're actually like we're hoodies posing with guns. Uh, don't you So even... we sprayed a few tags. We stopped now. And how do I know you won't start again? Because we won't. Oh, and to think we were all so impressed when the two of you did the clean-up, lapping up the praise. Tell me when you finished. Oh, very cunning. It was not cunning, it was the deal. What deal? With Ed. He made us do it. Ed? He caught us doing a wall. He said as long as we didn't do any more and help with the clean-up, he wouldn't tell on us, OK? Ed! So, like I said, end of. I don't think so. Start of, as far as I'm concerned. And your dad'll say the same. Great. You can't expect us to do nothing, just laugh it off. I think there's been enough of that going on. For one thing, when the holidays start, you can forget about sitting in front of the TV playing games all day. You can put your back into helping with some farm jobs. Whatever. And I'll have to tell Cathy. I don't suppose she's going to find it very funny either. Fine, do what you like. Or don't you even care? I'm only surprised that you do. You and Dad are only interested in Pip these days. What? Think about it. Ah, this is a nice surprise. Oh, hi, Dad. I thought you said you wouldn't have time today to work down the six acre. No, but Brenda's gone back to bed, so... Oh, uh, isn't she well? She's tired, that's all. She's out late with the girls. Ah, right. Mm. Well, you know I'm helping at Brookfield today. I've just nipped back for lunch. Yeah, that's fine. I don't need you. Oh, good. Well, thanks, Tom. That's OK. Oh, Dad. Yeah? You and Mum, how long were you engaged? What? What's brought this on? Nothing. I was just... Bren and I were talking about engagements and stuff, that's all. Ah, well, come on. You know this story. I know Mum proposed to you. yeah. Didn't give me much time to change my mind. Whisked me down the aisle within about, um, well, three months, I suppose. Start to finish. Right. Uh, she knew a good catch when she saw one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and fortunately, I had the sense not to resist. Well, uh, after the runaround I'd had with Mary... Who? Well, I was engaged before, you know. Were you? Yeah, I know it's hard to believe, Tom, but... I wasn't all bifocals and a bad back in those days. Yeah, sure. Mary Weston. Oh, she was a funny one. Keen enough to get engaged, but then... But I should have seen it coming when she lost her ring. Did she? Yeah, she thought she'd lost it. Well, we both did. I was on the point of having to buy her another. Then it turns up in the pocket of some jacket of hers. She'd forgotten she'd put it there. Mm. <laughs> Just sort of fizzled out after that. She ended up marrying her boss. Right. So, when your mother came along, well, at least I knew where I stood. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it won't be long, love. If I can just clear this corner. It's OK. David, we've got a problem. Oh, not another. Don't tell me, Pip. Josh. Josh? You know the graffiti round the village? It was him and Jamie. What? And they thought it was so clever, they filmed themselves doing it on Josh's camera. Oh. What? I don't understand this. They helped clean it off. Only because Ed caught them at it and told them to. And in return he said he wouldn't tell us. As long as they stopped. Oh, what was Josh thinking? Oh. I doubt much thinking went into it. When we sat round the table with me going on about how it was being discussed at the parish council, what kind of position was he putting me in? Well, like I say, David, he wasn't thinking about any of that. <sighs> so what have you done about it? Well, I've told him off and told him there'll be less TV and more farm work in the holidays for a start. Yeah. 
with no pocket money attached. Yeah, good idea. I'll keep him occupied. I presume you're going to tell him off as well. You bet I will. And I will tell him what will happen if he ever does anything like it again. <sighs> Mind you, Ed did us a big favour. It seems to me he handled it brilliantly. So that's it? Well, in the end, that's boys, isn't it? Is it? Well, what more do you want? I mean, you've come up with a pretty good punishment. The graffiti's stopped, and they've done their time. They helped with the clean-up. For the wrong reasons? Yes, but basically it's sorted, I suppose. Right. Well, I have to say, this is a marked contrast to your attitude to Pip. What do you mean? Oh, come on, David. You're down on her like a ton of bricks. That's different. Why? Because she's a girl? No. Because with Josh and Jamie, it was... High spirits. It was a, a short-term thing and it's over. Pip shows no desire to stop what she's doing. Oh, it looks like double standards to me. Double nothing. <sighs> Love, Pip is at a crucial time. Her whole life depends on the decisions that she makes in the next couple of years. I know, but... Oh, we're doing it again. What? Just what Josh says we do. Concentrating on Pip all the time. Is that what he said? Yeah. He obviously feels we've been neglecting him. And Ben does too, probably. Has he said so? No, but he was the one who showed me the film. He wouldn't normally tell on Josh. That's true. Are they both just wanting attention? Oh, sometimes I don't know what's happening to our family. So you're not going to say anything? Well, Cathy, is there anything left? I imagine you used up all the abuse when you told him off. Honestly, it's a good job I knew better than to threaten him with you. Oh, well, that's what his father's for, isn't it? I mean, you can rely on Sid to give Jamie a good rollicking. I've said I won't tell Sid. Have you? Well, you're right. But... I did give Jamie quite an earful. And the threat of making him and Josh pull out of the talent show was punishment enough. You, you, you did what? You can't deprive the village of Jedward. Yeah, that's what Jamie said. Oh, talk about cutting off your nose. No, no, we need them. I mean, they'll add a bit of life to the whole thing, if nothing else. I know. And anyway, mm. I blame myself, really. Well, it's your fault Josh and Jamie went out tagging. Well, you must admit we haven't been doing as much together, the three of us, as we used to. No, well... I mean... I, I, and I'm not blaming you. I know you're busy with the bar. But I should have seen that that would affect Jamie. Well, I'm sorry if it has. Well, of course it has. And I've been busy too, work and the shop. He's been left to his own devices. He's getting older, love. He's not going to want to hang around with us all the time, is he? I know. But I should have kept a better eye on what he's doing with himself when he's not. I mean, <sighs> when did he find the time? It's been going on for ages. Yeah. Well, look, I'll try and be around a bit more now, eh? Oh, thanks, love. And we'll both have to be when Sid and Jolene are away. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I would love to have been a fly on the wall at Brookfield, though. Trouble in paradise, eh? What? Well, Josh. You know, and after all that stuff with Pip. Kenton. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, mean of me, but... Well, look, it's not the end of the world, Cathy, and they won't try it again. Well, I hope not. Ruth was certainly in quite a state when she phoned. Oh, I bet she was. Anyway... Have you heard from Wayne yet about Lenny Thingy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I've just had a text. Says he's on to it. The talent show's two days away, Kenton. We need a third judge. Yeah, all right, I'll keep calling, but Wayne's on the case. Well, this Lenny had better be impressive after all this. He will be, honestly, he will be. Wayne won't let me down. Good. Because you haven't forgotten we've got a meeting with Linda tonight. Oh? Huh? So you're now at the bull dinner time. Aye. Oh, later. Aye, five-ish, OK. What are you up to Morning. later, then? Oh, hang on, Fallon. Just somebody get on a bike. No, a mountain bike. Jazza? Hmm. Seems to want me. Hmm. Look, later's OK. Jazza? Who's asking? I'm Harry, your new colleague. Pleased to meet you. Hmm. Same. I just wanted to say hello before I start properly. So... You pedalled all the way out here for where? Borchester? Just to say hi? Well, no. That's a fair way. I went to Grange Farm first to get directions up here. 
Then I had a spin round the village. Some old guy told me about Hayden Wood. So I had about an hour or so there off-road, and, and here I am. <laughs> You're not be needing any extra exercise when you start the milk round. That's a workout in itself. Oh, I don't think it'll give me any problems. <laughs> I thought I might keep the bike at Grange Farm, actually. Go for a ride some mornings after work. Mm, I suppose that's all right if you don't have any proper work to go to, like the pegs, eh? Mm, yeah, two jobs. Respect. <laughs> Respect? I can't wait to get stuck into country life. And building up the customer base for Mike and Ed, obviously. <laughs> customer base? They were very hot on that where I worked before. Hmm. Building society, right? Yes. I'll show you some of the training material, if you like. Find the customers, sure, but customer retention. That's the real key. You reckon? Yeah, and there's lots of ways you can go about it. Mm, don't tell me. Free pens and balloons for the wains. T- sorry, the, the, the who? The wains. Look, the weans. The, the kiddies. Oh, oh, I see. Your accent's going to take some getting used to. If you don't mind me asking, can the... Can the customers understand you? I've never had any complaints. You can get through to them, all right? Aye, I have my own ways. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Aye, and as for customer attention, well, they sure keep coming back from there. And I've never needed any training. Ed? Uh, Ed? <laughs> I'm in the office. Oh, good. Oh, Cathy! Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. Uh, no, sorry, it's um, it's just... I thought you might be Vicky. Oh, not when I last looked. <laughs> no, um, well, well, we're carving, see? Uh, the new cows, and she's desperate to be here when the next one comes along. Oh, I see. You've got a trainee midwife shadowing you. Well, I don't think she actually wants to help. You know, just run a nursery for him. Sorry? Well, the bull that was born last week, she's insisting on keeping it. Still got it on its mother. Oh, it's a bit awkward for you. Just a bit. What does Mike say? Well, he had to go along with it last week. We both did. He's supposed to be talking around. Good luck to him. Yeah. Anyway... Uh, anyway um, yes, Ed. Um, I've come to say thank you. Oh, not you as well. Oh, um, how's Ruth? Uh, David came over to Rickyard last night. Look, there's no need. No, I think uh, there is. Um, the way you dealt with Josh and Jamie, it was just right. Oh, I don't know. Uh, maybe I should have told you all in the first place. No, uh, what you did was perfect. And they take it from you far better than from us. <laughs> well, I remember what it's like to be 12 or 13 and bored silly round here. <laughs> yeah, it's been a bit of a wake-up call for me anyway. I'm going to have to keep more of an eye on Jamie. Oh, he's fine. He's rock solid. He's got his football, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, he loves that. Let's just hope him and Josh get their hands on those Felpersham tickets on Thursday. You are still letting them enter the show, are you? Oh, yes. According to them, there'd have been a public outcry if we hadn't. <laughs> Facebook campaign the lot. It's going to be a crazy night. Oh, no, don't say that. I'm on the refreshments. No, we just want a cheerful night with a nice profit at the end of it. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll let you get that. Oh, uh, no, don't worry. It's Vicky. Again. Got a voicemail. Died? I thought old rockers never died. (laughs) Five years ago? You you said you were mates. Oh, right. Fell over his dressing gown court? Whatever happened to sex and drugs and rock and roll? Yeah, look, actually, Wayne, it's immaterial whether he was in a ska band, a punk band or a skiffle group. The fact is, I... Well, of course I'm sorry. No, no, of course I am, of course. It's dreadful. But the fact remains that we're still one judge short, and if I don't find someone before six o'clock tonight, when I have to face the combined wrath of Kathy and Linda, then... (sighs) Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Look, is there anyone else you can think of? Anyone at all? Who? You're sure my bike will be safe, Jazza? Aye. There's no too many people in here fancy themselves as Chris Hoy. Well, that would be a completely different bike, actually. <laughs> you don't say. Hey, Baggy, you get in. Uh, get the drink, Senna. Usual for me. Yeah, you reckon you've wrapped that chain in enough times now? Uh, I've got this bike balanced how I like it. I don't want to risk losing it. <laughs> risk averse, eh, Harry? Mm. <laughs> uh, what a shame. Some of them that worked in the banks and building societies only like you, eh? Hey, hey, don't blame me. I lost my job. I'm as much a victim of the global financial crisis as anyone. 
Better than you say anything about that in the training manual, eh? Oh, yeah? Oh, you found him, then? Oh, oh. Hi, Ed. Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Aye, thanks for pointing him in my direction. Oh, you've been getting to know one another, have you? Mm. Aye. and fire and all that. Great. Well, I suppose as I'm here, I'd better buy you both a drink. Ah, uh, you had. You often come down at lunchtime too, do you? No, no, hardly ever. I just, uh Well, I've had that many interruptions this morning, I kind of felt I needed one. <laughs> Let me guess. Vicky? She did call, yeah. Oh, is she, is she very involved with the business? I, I didn't realise. You're the dead. <laughs> Are you still up for Thursday, Jess? Aye. Me and Fallon have got her a rehearsal later. She's no end the new. How much rehearsal does killing in the name need? Just a bit of fine tuning. What's this? Oh, there's this talent show in the village on Thursday. You should oh. come. Oh, then, no, maybe. Yeah, why not? You got till six o'clock tonight. <laughs> oh, I, I don't think so. I, I don't even live here. <laughs> no, but you'll be working here soon enough, that'd do. Aye, so uh, what's it going to be? A unicycle, maybe, with a bit of juggling thrown in? No, no really, I, I'm not a performer. I well, should come and see it anyway. Might give you a bit of a weird impression of Ambridge, but it'll be a laugh. Well, I, I go to martial arts on a Thursday. Oh, no oh, shame. You won't see Jazza doing his thing. Mm-hmm. Aye, start and beckons. Ah, you'll bottle it. You'll never get up on that stage. You watch me and get ready to pay up. Well, until Kenton gets here... Oh, I'm sorry, Linda. He did text. He's on his way. No, oh, don't worry, Cathy. I'm sure there's plenty we can get on with. Have a seat. Oh, thanks. Um, well, I can bring you up to date on Robert's endeavours, at least. Oh, good. How's he been getting on? He and Fallon have had some ideas about lighting effects for the confirmed acts. Uh, but what have you had in the way of late entries? I-, I checked the website again before I came out. Nothing else there. Mm. But when I rang Susan about the box in the shop, she said that Bob Pullen had put in a form. Mr Pullen? <laughs> what on earth is he going to do? Well, play the spoons, apparently. Oh. Well, there's no doubt about what category he should be in, anyway. Well, no. How old is he now? 94. And he's playing the spoons? <laughs> oh, well, we have to take all comers. I think it's very brave of him. Indeed. We'll have to make sure there are no hazards on the way to the backstage laboratory. Then. Oh, yeah. Um, maybe I'll get Jamie to keep an eye on him. Well, that would be useful, if he doesn't mind. He owes me a favour. Anyway, um, that's the entrance. <sighs> I must confess, I am a little worried about the animals. The animals? I'm not sure the village hall is licensed for animal performance, strictly speaking. And if Graham Ryder gets to hear... Oh, surely he won't say anything. He most certainly will. Don't you remember the fuss he made over my beanstalk? I've sorted out the children, but the dog and the cocker too. Oh, look, we'll deal with that if and when it happens. Oh, yes, I suppose so. With any luck, he'll have gone away for Easter. Oh, yes. Sorry I'm late. Uh, Robert, oh, let me in. Evening, Kenton. Hi, Linda. I love... Mm. Oh, right, sorry. Um, where were you? Oh, never mind that. We want to hear about our third judge. Yes, come on. I've got my autograph book already. Uh, well... Bit of bad news there. Oh, Kenton. No. But it's all sorted. Wayne's mate is a no-show owing to um, unforeseen circumstances. Oh, I suppose. But he did come up with another idea, which I think you'll agree is sheer genius. Well, go on. Neville Booth. What? Neville? Yeah, come on, he's very knowledgeable about music. Is he? Yeah, you know he is. You know, jazz, blues, he's got the most amazing collection. Kenton, Kenton, uh, he's hardly a scintillating personality, is he? Well, no, maybe not, but you got me for that. Oh. Anyway, Neville's agreed now, so... Well, after all this build-up, this is pretty feeble. Well, I suppose at this late stage, we've little choice. I mean, honestly, all you had to do was find a judge. Yeah, and I have. But, more importantly, I've realised something that we've all missed... What? Well, the the judges on the stage don't even matter. What? No, no, you see, in these kinds of shows, the real judge is the audience. Uh, What are you suggesting? We can't have a phone vote. No, but we can have a clapometer. Uh, And how's that going to work, pray? Well, don't look at me. I'm the ideas man. I'm sure Robert can rig something up. All right, girl. Ed, can't you do something? Well, I'm doing all I can. I mean, give us something for the pain. Oh, Vicky. Oh, if this was a woman, she'd have an epidural by now, if not a caesarean. Well, if you think I'm calling the vet... Well, how long is this going to go on? Oh, it shouldn't be long now. Oh, I hope so. Oh, look at her sides going. Good girl. Oh, this should do it. Come on, sweetheart. Push. Right, here we go. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's another ball. A little boy. Oh, Vicky. Oh, don't start all that again, Ed. Not now, not right this minute. Lord, let me take some pictures. Hey? 
Smile. <laughs> and another. Can you hold its head up now? <sighs> Looking at the camera. Okay. <sighs> Lovely. Right, oh, that's enough. Yeah, I'll do some bonding. I'll have to get him suckling. You're trying to say hello. Oh, it's just magical. <sighs> Vicky, look, it's not magical. It's farming. And this car. I've got to call him Archie. And last week. Elfie. They're no use to us. They've got to go. Well, that's what you say. Yes, it is. Well, like I said, Ed, I don't agree. So you'll definitely finish today? Yeah, this is the final coat, and the shelves in your study have already had theirs. Oh, that's marvellous, Robert. It's Thursday you move in, isn't it? Yes, I was determined to be in before Easter, and I'll just make it. <laughs> Good for you. You've made a superb job of these bookshelves, I must say. Uh, well, once you modified your designs, Jim... I yes, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I did get rather carried away trying to recreate the reading room of the British Museum. <laughs> I'm Robert Snell, not Robert Adam, you know. I'm very pleased with what you've come up with. And I've still got all the essentials. Shelving, cupboards beneath. As long as you're happy. I am. And you've done it in double quick time. I have to confess that's partly self-interest. I'll be busy enough in the next couple of days getting ready for the talent show. Oh, yes, of course. But it's been good to know I could leave you to get on with it. It all seems to have started happening at Jack's, too, you know. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes. Don's got the premises license sorted out, and Kenton's been accepted as premises supervisor. Oh, jolly good. What are you doing about decoration there, if you don't mind me asking? Will you be needing someone? Uh, well, that's uh, Kenton's department. Jim? Ah, here he is. Come on through, Kenton. We're in the sitting room. Oh, the front door's open. Yes, it's to let the smell of paint out. Well, it's not exactly working. Oh, hi, Robert. Afternoon. Robert was asking if you've anyone in mind to do the redecoration at Jack's. I must say, he comes highly recommended by me. Ah, uh, well, uh, possibly, but uh, I think it'll be more than a one-man thing, don't you? Anyway, right now he's got a more pressing job in hand. Uh, yeah, Lindy did mention that. What's this? A clapometer for the talent show. So you uh, worked out how to do it yet, Robert? Ed, you ain't telling me anything I don't know. So what are you doing about it? It ain't that easy. You don't know what Vicky's like. Uh, I'm getting a pretty good idea. When she gets an idea in her head, it's darn hard to turn her off it. Yeah, I know that. Which is why I've got two useless bull calves being suckled. One for over a week now. Then hang on, hang on a minute. Let me do these last few. Oh, that's better. Uh, now I can concentrate. Look, I'm sorry, Mike. Oh, she put the money in for the cows. I know yeah. that. And maybe that does give her a say in how we run the business. But we're a dairy business. And bull calves haven't got a place in it. She's got to understand that. I oh, know, I know. And I am trying, Ed. Every night we have the same conversation. I've told her I don't know how many times. So, Vicky can be very stubborn. <laughs> yeah, but... but... maybe it's our fault. What? Well, maybe we should have spelt it out more clearly, or at least I should, when she said she'd put the money in. That pure farming decisions would have to be down to you and me. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe we should. We wouldn't have known she'd take such an interest, were we? Should we have seen it coming? Oh, I don't know. No! How could we have? Anyway, we didn't, so that's that. But it's not too late, Mike. You have to spell it out to her now. <sighs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Her trouble is, I've seen this look on her before. Once she's convinced about something... Oh, Mike, this is ridiculous. You're sounding like you don't dare stand up to her. Hey, eh? Look, it's coming down to you. You're going to have to choose which partner you want to please. Her or me. I know, Ed, look... But I'm sorry, but that's how it seems to me. The thing is, she's been doing some research. What? Oh, she's been all very mysterious about it. That she was on the computer half the weekend. Oh, no, don't yeah, tell yeah, Think about it. <laughs> Vicky and daft... All she's got to do is put in male dairy calves and pretty soon she's going to come up with... No, Mike, no, we, we can't. Yeah, well, she said this morning she just needs to do a bit more research. No way. No way. Oh, you're right. We can't. So you'll tell her. I'll tell her. Ah, 
pint for you, Jim. Thank you. Yeah, but only a half for you, Robert. Oh, mate, yeah. you've got work to do. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. I mean, thanks very much. I've just finished this work for Jim. I'm up to my eyes already with music and lights for the talent show. And now you want me to make you a clapometer. Well, it's easy. You know, Fallon's little mixing desk thing, he'll show you the sound, won't it? Every time the audience claps. And all you've got to do is work out how to link that to sounds or pendulum gizmo. All he says. Look, yeah. pen, many of the day, use the back of that and get thinking. Jim, can you have a word with him? I have no control over him whatsoever. Great. Yeah, and we don't want to peep out of you until you've cracked it. Yeah. All right, then. Good man. I rather peeved about this talent show. Oh? Why? Organising it on the day I'm moving. I'd have entered otherwise. As it is, I'll be lucky if I've got the energy to drag myself into the audience. Oh, that's a real shame. What would you have done? Some more of those declamations you did at the fete? No, not quite the right sort of material. I thought I could have stuck with the classical theme, though... Rather more light-hearted. What, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum kind of thing? I was thinking more of some rather amusing jokes which circulate in academia. Yeah, hey, steady, Jim. It's a family audience, remember? Well, maybe I could have adapted some more modern jokes. Let me think. Yes. How many Phoenicians does it take to change a light bulb? Venetians? Phoenicians. Oh, oh never mind. Oh. Yeah. All right, all right. Try this. A centurion walks into a bar. Afternoon. Hello, Vicky. Oh, hi. Oh, don't distract Robert, please. He's working. Oh, right you are. Um, is Jolene about? I've come to show her some photos. No, it's sit on today. Ah, well, he won't want to see them. I've got to show someone, though. Would you like to see my little arrival? I'm sorry. There he is. Oh. Look. Less than a minute old. A calf. Isn't he sweet? <laughs> I'll delete that one. Ed got in the way. Hang on. A bull calf? Yeah, Archie. And Alfie was born last week. I've got some pictures of him, Yeah, too. yeah. Hold on, Vicky. I'm not the farmer in my family, but why all this fuss over bull calves? Oh, don't you start. I know what usually happens to them. I've had it all from Mike and Ed. But I've done my research, marshalled my arguments, and, as I suspected, there's definitely something we can do with them. Veal. Very good, Jim. And I do know that that's frowned on as well by some people, but... Well, it's got to be better than hoiking them off to market when they're tiny, or <clears throat> even worse, I mean, shooting them for nothing. Well, as long as they're humanely real. Which they would be. You want to speak to Pat. Sorry, Robert. Pat. She had a go at raising veal calves. Did she? Hmm. A while ago now. Fifteen years, maybe. Oh, very interesting. Thank you. Oh, I shall go and have a word. Oh, right. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> Bye, all. Bye. Yeah, bye. Oh, well done, mate. Mike and Ed are really going to thank you for that. Well, I'm sorry. Hey, hey, I... hey, not a peep, I said. Hey. You've cracked it. How are you getting on? You're going to fetch the cows in, Ed? Yeah. Why? Uh, thought I might walk down with you. OK. Not trying to put off going home, I hope. No, no, of course not. Good. I've said, haven't I? I'll tell her. Yeah, sorry. I'll stop going on. But, uh, don't need both of you on at me. No. Hello! Oh, Vicky! Hello, love! Oh, I rang home, Mike, and when you weren't there, I thought if I was quick, I could catch you both up here. Well, I was just going to go and get the cows in. Uh, so, it won't uh... take long. Look, you've both been very patient with me over these calves, and I want to say thank you. I know there's no way we can keep them just for the sake of oh, it. Oh, <laughs> No, hang on, love. <laughs> I've been trying to find out what we could do with them that would turn a profit to be welfare-friendly mm. and would fit in with everything that Grange Farm stands for. And...? You're both a bit naughty, really, because you must have known. We can raise them humanely for veal. Mike, Vicky, love, um... Just because it can be done doesn't mean that we want to do it. We've got enough on, haven't we, with expanding the range? I know you're busy, but when you went into this local milk, you did it because no-one else round here was doing it. <sighs> and look how that's paid off. There's hardly anyone doing veal at the moment. Yeah, and there's a reason for that. No-one wants to buy it. I don't think I agree with that, Ed. I've been talking to Pat. Oh, here we go. There's been a new organic initiative on this. Yeah, and we're not organic. The point is, organic or not, people are becoming more aware that it's out there. 
And with people wanting healthy meat. Oh, give up. Mike. Uh, mm. Look, Vicky, love, it, it's taking on too much. It, that's why Pat gave it up in the end. She gave it up because she found a farmer over Edgley Way who'd do it for her. That's where all her bull calves go. Uh, yeah, 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 well, yeah, I did hear someone about that. The um, point is, her calves are still going for high welfare veal, and she's getting a better price for her calves because of it. Well, there we are. We'll send our calves over to the same bloke, No, eh? he only takes organic. Well, we can't do it, love. How would we know we could sell it? I'll sort out the market. Will you leave that to me? You? I only work two days a week, plenty of free time. Well, you'll need it, trust me, because there is no market out there. And meanwhile, you landed me with another job. Well, I'll come and see to them if you like. I didn't think you'd want me around. Mike, please. I'm sure we can make it work. <clears throat> there is Sapphire Red. <sighs> Sapphire? One of the older cows gone a bit lame. We were thinking we'd have to get rid of her, but we've put the calves on her as a nurse cow to start off with. Oh, Mike! We could have a go, anyway. Couldn't we, Ed? Oh, it's lovely to see you, Lillian. Mm, and you. And it's so lovely to be in London. Yeah, we're lucky with the weather. Yeah. Oh, it all looks so beautiful, the river and everything. Mm. So what would you like to do? Should we go for a coffee somewhere? <laughs> Not just at the moment, Paul. James has filled me full of coffee. <laughs> How was the birthday boy? Oh, fine, thanks. He booked his favourite restaurant for last night and we had a good catch-up. Mm. Yeah, he wanted to know all about Matt. Bless him. Yeah. Yeah, but he's had to go to work today. Yeah, yeah. But at least he's busy, which is good. Oh, yeah, yeah, these days. So, is there anything special you'd like to do? Anything particular? Do you know what I'd really like? Go on. Can we, can we just wander around? I'd like to be a tourist, <laughs> see some sights. Yeah, that's fine by me. <laughs> Come on, then. Where should we start? I still think Edward should have said no. Oh, come on, Eddie, who could you? <laughs> there you are, girl. How do you like your new home, eh? He's the herd manager, ain't he? Ah, yeah, but who's herd, is it? Well, he's, of course. Or going to be when he's finished paying Oliver. Ah, but he ain't yet. And these cows that are calving, well, strictly speaking, they're Vicky Tucker's. <laughs> Dad, whose side are you on? I ain't on nobody's side. It's a very delicate situation. Only because she's pulling Mike's strings. Ah, but Edward needs Mike, doesn't he? To buy the milk, so it's all very finely balanced. Oh, well, thank you, Banky Moon. Eh? Hey? Well, Edward did the right thing, if you ask me. He's made his feelings clear, but he's got to go along with this idea of Vicky Tucker's for now, and, well, then we'll see how it goes. Oh, she'll never find a market for veal. Oh, don't you underestimate her. She seems pretty determined to me. Uh, like Edward hasn't got enough to do. Well, he's got us to help, hasn't he? I can't do much. I'm back on the car boots now. I've got the market, and I'm... Hoping the outdoor work's going to take off any minute. Well, I'll do the cars. Don't you worry. The main thing is to get them settled on her today. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go and fetch them in a minute. Yeah, a bit of luck for you, old girl, though, wouldn't it, eh? <laughs> You'd have been down the road otherwise. Well, I'm glad someone's happy. Uh, well, shall we make ourselves a brew then, eh? Yeah, why not? Oh, and I'll tell you what, hmm? we can have another run-through of our routine for tomorrow. Oh, I still think we'd have stood a better chance than the over-60s category. <laughs> hey, do you mind? I'm not over-60. Yeah, but look at the competition in that group. Derek Fletcher and his balloon modelling, Bert Fry and one of his so-called poems, Bob Pullen playing the spoon. Yeah, that was eternal. Oh, I don't know what the poor old fella's thinking. He's so shaky these days, he'll be playing the spoons even when he ain't playing the spoons. <laughs> well, if you see what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I still reckon we've got a good chance, though. What's the competition in the general section? A blooming cock or two? Doing Silent Night. <laughs> and then even the right time of year. No. So, <clears throat> I say, I say, I say. Jamaica! No, Dad. No, not yet. What? Not yet. Not till after I've said the rest of it. Eh? Not till after I've said the bit about the West Indies. Oh, ah, 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 the West Indies, yes. Yeah. Got that? The West Indies, right, right, good. 
I say, I say, I say. What do you say? My wife's just gone to the West Indies. Tobago? No. No? No. Oh, let's have that cup of tea. She liked it. Yeah, yeah, she really liked it. I mean, she said she'd never tasted anything quite like it, in a good way. <laughs> and she was French. The yeah. country of how many cheeses? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm only telling you what she said, Helen, and she loved that it was locally made by hand, of oh. course. Brilliant. Yeah, I told her where she could go and buy some to take home. I mean, it could be the start of Sterling Gold's first export order. Ooh, well, let's not get too carried away. Well, I mean, you never know. So don't think you can go letting production lapse when you have the baby. No, I wasn't going to. <laughs> right, well, tell me about yesterday. Oh, I'm so glad I got you to talk to her about it, Ian. Oh, go on. No, really. I mean, Mum's been great, but Tom still can't get his head around it. I thought he was coming round, but he's been really off with me this week. Yeah, I suppose he wasn't very chatty when he brought the meat on Monday, but... I mean, I suppose it's easy to think it's all about you, Helen, but maybe he's just busy. Yeah, could be. There's no doubt about Dad, though. Well, I'm still hoping you'll meet a nice young man in the next six <laughs> months. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it doesn't make for a great atmosphere. I mean, last time I went round, he promptly went out to the pub. Well, he's going to be spending a lot of time down there, isn't he? Because I don't think you're going to change your mind. No, I'm not. Good. So what was yesterday all about? Well, really, it was less about the treatment and more about, well, the sort of personal, psychological side. Oh, yeah? Yeah, like telling the child the truth about how it was conceived. But, I mean, I thought you said you were already going to do that. Yes, yes. She thinks that's absolutely the right thing to do, but what we were talking about was when. Oh, such beautiful horses. Oh, go on, it's the guardsman you're riding up. I am not. I know a lot about horses, actually, Paul. Do you? Mm-hmm. I used to run a riding stable. <laughs> Lillian, there's such a lot about you I don't know. <laughs> yes, all my dark past. <laughs> <laughs> Though, uh, I have to say, those uniforms. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> and the kicky boots. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true, do you think, that they have to polish the soles? You think it'd make them awfully slippery? I don't know. Go and ask him. They're not allowed to talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I had my camera. Yeah. I wonder how many other people's pictures are going to have us in the background. That'd be a giveaway. Doesn't anyone know you're here? <laughs> well, they know I'm in London, obviously. But... No, I didn't mention I was seeing anyone down here, apart from James. Oh, I'm not trying to hide anything. It just didn't come up. Uh, no, right, right. I mean, to be fair, I didn't tell anyone either, kids or anything. Did they um, ask any more about who I was after the funeral? No, kids their age. They're not interested in my life. <laughs> Did James ask what you were doing today? Shopping, he, he assumed, and I didn't tell him otherwise. Right. Oh, oh, look at those beautiful horses, Paul. Aren't they perfect? It seems the earlier you do it, the better. Well, how early's early? Really early. Like, before the age of three. Three? <laughs> Are they even going to remember? No, nope, that's the point. The whole idea is if you tell them when they're tiny, they can never specifically remember being told. OK, I see. So how are you meant to bring it up? I don't think you really have to. Children just ask questions, don't they? <laughs> I know that from Jake and Mia. <laughs> <laughs> True. Like, by the age of two or three, they've sussed out that other children most often have a mummy and a daddy, and when they ask where their daddy is... Yeah, what do you say? Well, that's down to me, really, how it comes up and how I want to put it at the time. She made a few suggestions. You just have to find the words that are right for you. Right. Yeah, it seems it's married couples who tend not to tell the child till it's older. Single mothers seem to... Get on with it. Uh, well, I suppose they're the ones who have to explain why there isn't a dad around. Yeah, I guess so. So, that was it. Now I just want it to start happening. There you are, Vicky, love. Suckling away, quite happy. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's one of the loveliest things I've ever seen. Uh. Yes. And she took to them all right, because uh, Ed thought there might be a problem. Oh, no, 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 it was fine. It, it helps that she's got her nose in a bucket of grub, of course. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now she's accepted them. She should let them suckle as much as they want. Oh, 
Thank you ever so much for doing this, Joe. Mike says um, you're going to do quite a lot of the work with the cars. Well, I offered, didn't I? It shouldn't be a lot of work, to be honest. Yeah. Look, I know Ed's not that keen, and I'm very grateful to all of you for humouring me. Well, we're expecting you to do your bit as well. Oh, I intend to. Uh, not with a stop work. Uh, your job's finding somebody to buy the meat at the end of it. Uh, well, that's what you said you'd do, isn't it? Oh, yes. I'm determined. Uh. I'm going to talk tactics with Mike tonight. Fair enough. How's it going, Dan? Oh, hello. Hello, Eddie. <laughs> so far, so good, eh, Joe? Ah. Anyway, I'm going to go and say hello to Mike. Thanks again, Joe. Um, I see ya. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> She's happy enough, then. Ah. Good job she won here earlier when this old bosom was kicking him away. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's got a very rosy view of farming, that's for sure. Mm, maybe we should have let her see it like it is. She'll learn. And the other thing she said was that donor children who do trace their father often go on to trace their siblings as well. Oh, yeah, of course, I hadn't thought of that. I mean, I guess there could be quite a few. Yeah. I don't think I'll mention that bit to Dad. No, that's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then, as if that's not enough, she she asked me if I had thought about having other children. What, by donor? Yeah. But I've got to have this one first. Oh, that's proving hard enough. Yeah. And then after all that, she wanted to know if I'd met someone, how that would affect me and the child. Well, meaning you could have children with him? Well, whether you do or not, just the fact of there being someone else around. Yes. Such a lot to think about. Well, not really there. I have no intention of meeting anyone. Oh, come on. You can't say that. Ian, you know how I feel. And once I've had the baby, I certainly shan't be looking. What would I need a man for? Uh, well, OK, where do we start? For, with love? Companionship? Support? <sighs> In theory, but no thank you. I'd rather rely on myself. Helen... D- Look, I love you dearly, you know that, but, I mean, do you not think that's just a wee bit extreme? Uh, No. (laughs) It's perfectly logical. Well, yeah, that's the problem. It shouldn't be. No, I mean, uh, if we're being logical, why cut off all your options, especially so early on? Well, because, Ian, you are probably the perfect man. Mm -hmm. Can't argue with that. (laughs) (laughs) I'm never going to meet anyone as good as you, and, well, you're kind of off limits, aren't you? (laughs) (laughs) You didn't have to come with me right to the station, Paul. I wanted to. Anyway, it's no trouble. Yes, it is. You've got to trek right back across town. I don't mind. Uh, I don't know where the time's gone. (laughs) No, nor me. It's your fault, though, making me tell you all my past history over lunch. I'm surprised you're still awake. Oh, I can't believe everything you've packed in, Lillian. (laughs) Makes me feel very boring. Oh, rubbish. The two-bit building business, the semi in Watford, didn't amount to much. Look, there's a lot to be said for normal, everyday life. There have been times in mind when it's been a bit too exciting. (laughs) Mostly since you met my brother, as far as I Uh, Costa Rica. Yeah, yeah, well, I didn't tell you that. Okay, that was the wine talking. Okay, but I still want to hear about how you came to be in Guernsey and how you and Matt got together in the first place. Well, I'm afraid that'll have to wait for another time. Yeah. So, uh, when might that be? I mean, would you like to meet up again? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I would, very much. Good, me too. Good. Oh, look, I'd I better get this train, but um, uh, give me a ring. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, and thanks for a lovely day. Oh, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, so have I. Bye, then. Bye, Paul. Bye. It's working. Yes. Oh, great stuff, mate. Yes, well done, Robert. I told you we'd solve it. It's picking up the audience coming in a treat. Good job the clapometer is working at least. We've had three last-minute withdrawals. Oh, no. Who? Derek's got a sore throat. How does that affect balloon modelling? And there's no sign of Neville. You did check him, Kenton. Yes, yes. I told him to be here 15 minutes before kickoff. So where is he? Linda, I'm not his keeper. Oh, maybe his limo was late. Uh- It's absolutely packed. If Usha doesn't hurry up, I'm not going to be able to hang on to this seat for her. Well, time was we'd have needed more than three. Now Pitt wouldn't be seen dead here. Even Ben's deserted us. He hasn't deserted us, David. He only wanted to sit with Rory. Mm. Oh, I bet it's tense backstage. I hope Josh is behaving. Oh, he will be. Linda's back there, remember? True. 
He's lucky we're even letting him do it. Oh, come on, Ruth, loosen up. I still think we let him off lightly. Yeah, wait till he's getting up next week to get the cows in for you. True. He is not going to do it again. Now, if one thing, if there is any more graffiti, he and Jamie will be suspects one and two, won't they? Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, there she is. Usha, down here! You're never going to do killing in the name. Listen, there's money right on this. I've said I perform and perform I will. Why don't you just play your bagpipes like you did at the fake? Why would I want to repeat myself? Anyway, the bet me I wouldn't sing. How much is this bet then? Well, let's just say it's worth my while. It'd have to be, because all you win in the general section is a bit of yoghurt and stuff. But us, yo, Felpisham City, here, here we, we go, go, here we go, here yeah, we go. Yeah, lads, lads, keep the cat walling for the stage, yeah. Josh, Jamie! Hi, Valen. Oh, hey, Jazz. Boys, a bit of bad news. What? You can't have the strobe lights after all. Oh, what? What, Mrs Noakes says that they'll set off her cockatoo. Oh, you wonder they say never work with children and animals. I know, but... Here, is it true what I'm hearing? We Molly Buttons demanding backstage jelly beans and flavoured water. Kent! Yeah, Linda, don't come hassling me. I've tried Neville's mobile No, 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 I... it's all right. I found him in the gents. Oh. Or rather, Robert did, going through Nathan's Michael Jackson routine. I have to say, with that makeup, it looks spookily like him. Oh, never mind that. Now, I've briefed Neville, mm. shown him the buzzers. Oh, great. So you make sure you explain about them to the audience and the clapometer. Yeah, I will. So, are we nearly good to go, then? Um, well, let's see. Fallon's in position. And Robert? Oh, yes, no. I do believe we are. Five minutes, everyone. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pitt was properly April fool. Well, good for Jude. That's brilliant. Yeah, well, she thought so. She never stopped going on about it. Has no one played an April fool on Alan, then? Stole his tent while he was asleep or anything. Well, they probably would have if he'd been in ambush, but they're a bit better behaved than Derek. <laughs> Where is he tonight? Edgley. He's doing the service there, so it seemed logical. Oh, well, he's done so well to keep it up, and I'm glad to hear he's better. Well, I can't wait for Sunday, I must say, and next week when it all goes quiet. <laughs> oh, it's hey, starting! Here we go! Good evening, everyone! Hooray! Thank you! And what an evening it's going to be! Now, we want to get straight on with the acts, but first, I have to explain a couple of things. You'd better get used to hearing this. Linda, would you? <coughs> Thank you. Because that means one or more of us on stage judges, that's myself, Yay! the lovely Linda Woo! Snell, Yay! and how lucky we are, our own Mr. Neville Booth Yay! have had enough of the acting question. Three buzzes and the performer has to stop and leave the stage. But the real judge is you, the audience, which is why our technical supremo Robert has created our very own clapometer. Oh, yes, he has. OK, let's have a test run. If you could all now applaud, please. Come on, louder. Come on, louder. to the screen so you'll know just how loud you are and that's going to be the final decider on the winner in each category wow. right now without further ado let's launch straight into the under 16s and the first act is luke johnson aged eight and his performing dog so please give a big ambridge welcome to luke and sonny <laughs> Do is jump over the stick. Neville! Neville! Oh dear, Clinton, do something! Yes, uh, Luke, uh, can you call your dog off, please? Sonic, come on. Hey, hey, Sonic, good boy, good dog. I tell you what, Luke, why don't you and Sonic go off, come back later when he's calmed down, eh? Good lad. That's right, a big round of applause for Luke and Sonic! Yay! Hey, see that couple on the go! 
Right, well, let's treat that as a test run, shall we? Good. OK, now on to our next act. Known already to some of you from her memorable and indeed winning performance as a mushroom at the village fete, please welcome Molly Button, age 10, who's going to do a tap dance. OK, take it away, Molly! <laughs> Rubbish. Uh, true enough. You better not try buzzing me. <laughs> You'll get the guys got kiss. Linda's really having a go at him. Now, will you guys stick with it, eh? No matter what happens. You can buzz as much as you like. You just keep going. <laughs> we will. We'll go bust him right off the stage. <laughs> Thank God for jelly beans. Is Molly going to go on again? She's thinking about it. <laughs> Diva. Yeah, move over, Mariah Carey. Well, so you ready, boys? Are we next? Yeah, I've just had Kenton over the earpiece. He's about to introduce you. Right, OK. The big moment. Right, go on in the wings. Ready? And be ready for the groupies, eh? Right, take two. Or is it three? Hey, who's counting? Because the next act is going to blow your socks off. Yes, this is it. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. It is Ambridge's very own Jedward. Yes, indeed, yes, it is. So please come on, give it up, please, for Josh and Jamie. understand is how Neville got to be a judge in the first place. Well, I just asked Cathy. According to Kenton, he's a big noise on the Ambridge music scene. Oh, well, true. He is a bell ringer. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't do Josh and Jamie any harm, anyway. In fact, quite the opposite. Hey, there they are. Hey, 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 over here. We did it. We got the footy ticket. <laughs> yeah, well done. Well done, Jamie. <laughs> Thanks, Anne. Uh, a very convincing win, a very convincing performance, and I like your hair. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to keep it like this. What? Joke, Mum. Oh. Well, you saw off Molly Button anyway. Word on the street was that she was the favourite. Just because she's Linda's favourite. Ah, she was well off her stride by the time she came back on. Her dad's complained. They're such sore losers. <laughs> Neville was outrageous. They must have buzzed nearly every act within the first ten seconds. I thought Bert was going to thump him. It didn't affect old Mr Pullen, though, did it? He was amazing. He just carried on playing those spoons. <laughs> yeah, well, to be fair, once he started, I don't think you can stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's great that he won, though. Yeah. See, he's ace. He fought the Japanese in the war. He was telling me all about this ambush. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the performance will be resuming in five minutes. Five minutes until we resume with the general section of tonight's contest. Thank you. Thank you. Right, now for the big one. Yeah, let's see if Neville's quite so hot on the buzzer when it's Nathan's turn. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after an amazing second half, we come to the final act of the evening. Yes. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Hasn't it been fantastic? Yay! Now, our trusty clap on that gave us some worthy winners in the first half for uh, Josh and Jamie in the under-16s. And a truly stunning performance from Bob Pullen in the over-60s. In the general section so far, we've got Eddie and Joe's Joke Shop in the lead. Yay! Followed closely by Hilary Noakes with Benson the Cockatoo. <laughs> yes, and of course, an astonishing portrayal of Michael Jackson from Nathan Boone. 
Uh, the last one, at least, not attracting too much attention from the most picky of our judges. So, can our last act beat them to the prize? Oh, now, there's been much speculation about what he's going to sing, or if he's going to sing at all. But I am reliably informed he is in the wings waiting to come on. So please put your hands together for Ambridge's favourite milkman, Jazza McCreary! Thank you, Kenton. Thank you, everyone. Fallon? Ready when you are. <clears throat> right, on you go. Come now, gather now, here where the flowers grow, white is the blossom as the snow on the bend. Hear now, freedom's call, we'll make a solemn vow now, by the roses, O oh, Prince Jelly. By the gain of Bannock, from your battle axe to wheel, by the way your grandsires on Flodden's bloody field, by the Flodden, the bonny Prince to shield. Fight by the roses, O oh, Prince Kelly. Now gather now, here where the flowers grow. White is the bottom of the snow on the bend. Here now, please call me. I'm sorry I'm so early, Jenny. Oh, that's no problem. Lunch won't be for about an hour, though. Oh, that's fine. I was uh, at a bit of a loose end, that's all. Oh, dear. Are you finding life in Ambridge dull after London? No. Well, no more than usual. Oh, I want to hear all about it. How was James? What did he do? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Look, can we have a drink or have we got to abstain because it's Good Friday? No, no, I don't think so. We're going to be having our lunch while other people are doing the vigil, after all. Good. Well, crack open the wine, then. It's all right. <laughs> it's not even 12 oh, yet. Sorry, though. darling. Seems an awfully long morning. They do, don't they, bang holidays when you're on your own? Oh, Lillian, you are fed up. You should have come to the talent show last night. And that would have made you laugh. <laughs> yeah, what was it like? Well, hard to describe, really. Probably the most bizarre evening I've ever sat through. Uh, even by Ambridge standards. Must have been strange. Well, if I tell you that it featured a, a whistling cockatoo and a dog that uh, wouldn't jump, <laughs> Mr Pullen playing his yeah, yeah, I heard it was entry. <laughs> oh, and Sabrina Thwaite and her girls hurling themselves around. Um, Ghostbusters and, and some yodelling. Yodelling? Mm -hmm. Marcus Hendricks. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? It looks so harmless. Oh. oh, yes. And talking of harmless, or not, Nathan Booth as Michael Jackson. Oh. I'm surprised that Roy didn't have nightmares. <laughs> what did you make of it oh, all? We loved it. Here we are. Oh, thanks. Cheers. Oh, cheers. But the biggest revelation of all was Jazza. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were all <sighs> expecting that ghastly Christmas song, but no. Well, what did he do then? A Scottish folk song. No. Mm-hmm. And he's really got quite a nice voice. He stormed to a win, anyway. <laughs> Good for him. Anyway, Lillian, come on, tell me all about your London trip. Oh, well, um, it was, uh, <laughs> it was very nice. Oh, come on, let's have some detail. How's James? And, well, how's he getting on with his latest, well, what's the girlfriend called? Oh, that's all off, which is why I realised he was free to see me. Oh, well, that's a shame. Anyway, I got down there, I treated him to dinner, we had a really nice evening, went back to the flat, went to bed, and next day, off he went to work. Oh. Well, I'd assumed you were spending the Wednesday with him as well. No. No, no, no. That was never the arrangement. Well, what did you do then, all by yourself? Well, actually, I, I, I had a wonderful day. I, um, I had the most lovely stroll round, all the trees coming out and everything. And had a nice leisurely lunch and got the train home again. Oh. In fact, I enjoyed it so much I might do it more often. You know, just, just go down for the day. Well, you don't want to keep going down on your own. I mean, we could both go. Oh, well... Well, I'd well, love it. And we could do the shops and go to an exhibition and we can even do a matinee. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah we could. But it'd be awfully difficult for you to arrange, darling. No, no, not really. I'm sure I can be spared for one day. We'll have to see what we can sort out. Yeah. 
Oh, what fun! Thanks for coming with me, Shula. Oh, you don't have to thank me, Mum. I thought you'd be doing the vigil at the cathedral. Well, I was going to. Then I felt... Well, I wanted to be with you. Oh. I'll be at the cathedral on Sunday. Of course. Which service are you going to? Lakey Hill? Yes, I like that one. Mm, I always used to. You've got someone to go with on Sunday, though. Ruth or David? No, I doubt it. No, Chris is picking me up. Oh, good. That's all right, then. Yes. Well, I'm sure Alan will be pleased to see you today, anyway. Mm. Shall we go and say hello to your father after the service? Yes, let's. Then I can come back for a cup of tea, if that's all right. That would be lovely. <sighs> oh, dear. Come on, Mum. I can't believe we're so organised, getting the van set up the day before the Easter fair kicks off. Yeah. Elizabeth seems pleased. One less thing for her to worry about. Of course. Oh, bet give this a wipe down. They're busy enough today. They've got a big wedding on. Yeah? Yeah, it's a very popular weekend for them, apparently. Oh. So what do you think? Sorry? Do you fancy an Easter wedding? What? Next year. But we'd better get on with Not it. again. What is your rush, exactly? No rush. Going on about weddings at every opportunity. I don't. I just like to feel that I know where I'm going. That we both do. And that it's the same place. This is all because of Helen. No. Yes, it is. You can't bear the idea of your sister who's not even settled down having a kid before you. That's not what it's about. So explain. Brenda, I love you. Yes, OK, maybe all this stuff with Helen has made me think about the future a bit more. But what it's really about is what I said. I love you. And I know I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I just want some sign that you really, really feel the same. There are some Florentines if you'd like one, Lillian. After that lunch? No thanks, coffee's fine. <laughs> There you are, then. Thanks. But honestly, Jenny, why have you waited till now to tell me? Oh, well... Letting me chatter on when you've got all this on your mind. Ah, oh, there's not much I can do about it, is there? Now Kate's gone back. I just can't understand why Brian didn't say something to you before she left. Well, he says he didn't want to spoil our last day together. And if he'd told me then what Kate had said, I'd have started to worry and cross-question her and our... Her holiday would have been ruined. But it clearly wasn't quite the holiday you thought it was. When I spoke to her on the phone this week, I, I still think she sounded a bit wan, really. Oh, and I tried to put it in her head how lucky she is to have such a lovely family. And lucky that she's got Lucas's family to rally round and, well, how important family life is. Oh, Jenny. But, oh, I don't know. She's a lot more mature than she was, of course, but I... Yeah, you're still worried she might do something a bit rash. Well, well, yes. But Kate's always been such a a restless spirit. Yeah. And you and I both know how dangerous that can be. It was sweet of Bert to have brought those daffs for Dad. Yes. He was very fond of you, Father. Yeah, I know. Tad's blazer didn't bring him much luck last night, though, did it? <laughs> no, poor Bert. Never was so quick on that buzzer. Oh, he made the TV judges seem positively generous. Molly Button's father was fuming. Kenton certainly had some explaining to do. He was a good compare, though, wasn't he? Oh, natural. Did Jim enjoy it? I didn't have a chance to ask him. Well, you know, Jim, mm. he had some pretty cutting things to say about some of the acts, but actually it was very funny. I can imagine. He and Neville would make a good pair. And his move went all right? Yes. Alistair was waiting for the summons. But he got proper removers, thank goodness. I'll call in over the weekend and say hello. It was strange last night. Mm. It was that all right? No. I meant being there without Phil. Oh, yes, I see. There was the piano. 
I could just see him sitting there. Yes. You should have sat with us, Mum. No, no. I promised Peggy. She and Chris have been so kind at scooping me up. You all have. Oh, I hope so. I hope we're getting it right. I know you don't want to be with people every minute of every day. No, I don't. The thing is, you've all got busy lives. I don't want any of you to feel Mum needs looking after. Oh, it's not that exactly. No. But you know, Shula, you of all people, you have to find your own way through. Yes. And it's so kind of everyone, but... If I'm never on my own, I'm not going to have the time to find my own way through, am I? No. I know what you mean. So, it's just about finding the right balance, really. And that'll take us all a while. Yes. Uh, Mum, there is one thing we've all been wondering about. Elizabeth mentioned it. Dad's birthday. Yes, not long now. No, so, have you got any thoughts? Do you want us to organise something, all the family? Or if you just want to spend it on your own, or with Auntie Chris, well, that's fine too. We understand. Oh, darling. To be honest, I just don't know. Let me have a think. We're going round in circles here. Walking or talking? Both. I've been round the lake twice now. Just give me a straight answer, then. Do you want to marry me or not? Of course I do. I've told you. <sighs> Let's sit down, can we? Sure. Tom, look. I love you. And I'm absolutely not saying I don't want to marry you. Of course I do. But as far as I'm concerned, we made the big commitment when we moved in together. That's the important thing. Well, OK, as far as it goes... That's just it. It seems to me you see it like some master plan. Getting engaged is stage one, stage two is the wedding, stage three is immediately having a baby. I never said immediately. Just listen, please. It feels to me it's all turned into some box-ticking exercise. And that's not how I see it. I want us to be together forever. That's why we live together, but I've got to get my career started first. Or why should I do all those years at uni? I don't want to stop you doing anything, Bren. Getting married doesn't have to, surely. It does if the next thing's babies. I need to find a career, Tom, not just a job. I've worked hard for my degree and I want to use it and use it properly. I know. Of course you do. And above all... I want to prove myself. I don't want to be dependent on you, living off you on our wedding day. But... I know you don't mind, but I do. That's really, really important to me, for who I am. Don't you see that? OK. I am trying. I'm applying for everything, sending off my CV. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know it's not what you wanted to hear, but that's me being totally honest. Is that OK? Looks like it's going to have to be. Tom, as far as I'm concerned, getting married won't prove I love you any more than living together does. And it can't make me love you any more than I do. But we can't set a date. I wish we could, but the minute we can, we will. Okay? Promise? Promise.